Warning! Not for the easily offended or the pussy hearted. You have been warned. You just oh, went back to. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me you yeah. woke up from death and what you did in front of everybody was just laugh <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh yeah. man, I would love to die and come back and do that, dude. That's great. How long are we gonna let white people get away with saying the word vinegar? <laughs> Cuban people, I'm Cuban. Cubans uh, will give you a big face based on the one thing you absolutely hate about yourself. So my parents had a friend growing up that I still don't know his name. I just know that they called him Coral Lucid. Which all the people that laugh are Spanish. So for the gringos in here, I'll tell you what that means. It means sweet butt. And he wasn't even gay, it was because he had memory surgery. Baby out of the paper and I called it. Holy shit, it's the actual escape! <laughs> Alright, see, because I fucking hate dating apps. You gotta meet people a little fashion way. Bars, barbecues, church functions. That's how I met my significant other in church function. I'm full of shit, her sister sucked my dick. And they're both really good at their craft. So I have a theory that it's genetics, I hope. And that means I have to do the unthinkable. And let the mom do her thing. And if the mom's not that good. I'm just not ready to have a beard on my ball sack yet. <laughs> this is a PSA to all the women out there. A period has never stopped anything but a sentence. So fuck your shark week. Come here, my little Heinz bottle. I'm going to please you in 57 different varieties. What the fuck is up, Tampa Bay? Ah! Not only have I taken over this fucking douchebags podcast. I kicked him the fuck out of my bank, too. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. I was peeing next to this funny guy at work the other day. It made me angry. I'm a looker. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm gay, but it does mean I like to look over the stall and see what you're working with, daddy. I'm just out of curiosity. Scotty cheated that Scotty one. Chi, thank you. I shoved a banana up my ass. C-U-N-T. C-word. I lost. And I got suspended. Because the judge was a cunt. What was your favorite movie of mine? Can you recall any movies I did that you thought were good? We can't, we can't hear you, brother. <laughs> like that on like purpose, he... so they don't get you. I feel like yeah. he's, I feel like he's getting ready for an insane intro. I hope so. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, your volume yeah, is yeah. off, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. He's, gonna, he's gonna wait like a minute, and then all of a sudden, just scream obscenities. He's muted now. He muted. I am muted. Unmuted. That's unmute. Now I see why we saw him in the Capitol on January 6th. There we go. There he is. Happy hello fucking ween, pals. Pickle Rick. We got Pickle Rick, Silent Bob, Storm the Capitol Trooper. And your, and your favorite Jew in the world, God. Just kidding, I'm a wizard. <laughs> the cheapest of them all. 
I know so awesome. who who are these Palestinians? I I I they don't the Palestine. They, they must be Jews because their last name is Stein. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Lord, that's too soon. Too soon. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> what do you mean too uh, soon? It's been two thousand fucking years. Yeah, they've been fighting since they came out, dude. Well, listen, we do revisionist Everybody history around here. Jesus, we do revisionist history around here. Revisionist and history. By my last, by my last count, it only happened about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we got a visitor. It's <laughs> Mer- <laughs> it's well, ago, yeah, because the I mean, the air is not on, the windows are open because well, we had pest control. We're gonna have uh, basically back on eighty one as well. If I'm you're the I swear I'm a Jews, fucking madman. Hey! Hey! Every day, not just yeah. If you're the king of the Jews, Scotty, what does that make her? Mary Magdalene. It makes her the queen <laughs> of Judas. Judas, no, not you queen of Judas. Judas. <laughs> oh, Manny, I like your skull. He's your friend. That's his ex-wife. From the, from the dead. That's his ex. That's his ex-wife. Oh shit! My heterosexual life mate. <laughs> they don't talk back when they're dead. Dude. <laughs> that's true. He gives them the it's best Bob, bone. It, 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 it's Bob and Silent J. So okay, we got the nutty professor. The, joint. We got, uh... oh, the nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> she called you the nutty professor. <laughs> I, I wish Rick was a big fat black guy. Hercules, 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 Hercules. <laughs> That movie is so good. Like so fucking good, dude. And what do you think Anthony is? I don't know. He's uh in his arm gear. He's ready okay. to get some ass over so, right now, uh, January 6th. Storm the Capitol Trooper. Yeah. There it is. Uh, Rick, uh, Rick is uh, yeah. Rick from Rick Come and on, Morty. And uh, Manny is Silent Bob. Jay and Silent Bob. Yep. That's Jay. He's dead right there. He's right there. In the mouth. The joint is the J. This is fuck, what happened fuck, if Jason Mears never got sober. Mother, mother, fuck. Mother, mother, fuck, fuck. Mother, fuck, mother, fuck. Mother, fuck, mother, fuck. One, two. One, two, three, four. No, 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 Drinking beers, drinking beers, 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 Who smokes the bloods? We smoke the bloods. We smoke the bloods. What a bunch of old fucks. 50 bucks, little man. Put that that shit 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 up in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't. Hey, I I I invented weed. I improved. I invented weed. I improved. (laughs) Say hi to Luna. You heard it from Kevin. Say hi, Luna. Hey, I'm the dog that that licks Rick's balls when he wants to. Those big fucking pigs. I'm going to say that dog's feening for peanut butter right now. All you, you see the, my nuts. All the dog long. Is, all you see the dog is going like this. <laughs> Why is your dog always so thirsty? All right, so that leads me to a question. Does anybody else here have a real problem with having sex while there's an animal in the room? No, my, I don't have any pets. Dude, my dog will literally uh, my dog will literally no. I'll be hitting my wife in the back and I'm not skinny. I got a fupa and mm-hmm. So I'm up and I'm kind of looking at myself in the mirror. And the other night, my dog put her cold ass nose right into my asshole. How did it feel? Fucking scared the shit. I thought like an amphibian. Would you call that hello from the other side? (laughs) (laughs) I I got one for you. Good. Kelly's dog, Hades, pulled a 40-year-old virgin on me the first time I fucked her. No. Okay. Wait, what? This is when I automatically said no animals in the room when you and me have sex. Bruh. I'm just I, happy to fuck. When Kelly met me, I was a gym rat. And it was more muscle than fat on my body. Now you're this is when you had the emo hair. Yeah. So yeah, and I had black emo hair, yep. And uh I was hitting it from the mm-hmm. back like a fucking soldier because I had stamina for days. And I was putting <laughs> that work. I'm talking like post Malone 300 blackout blow your fucking back out work. Ooh, Nine to five. <laughs> that's when I felt this fucking cold, wet tongue just lick my ass, and no. I knew that this wasn't a threesome, so I freaked out. So you've got the lick. Yeah, my I've ass grabbed by a fucking four-year-old today. <laughs> got your ass licked by a four-year-old? Grabbed. <laughs> oh, jeez. What... Anyone else hard? <laughs> Not my proudest fat. 
that's not good. <laughs> good lord. <laughs> oh man. I mean, if only I had my MAGA hat, which says Mexicans always get across. Nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so do my, Zimbabweans now. <laughs> my question is. When it comes to dogs licking assholes while having sex, your asshole must smell like something in order for them to like be like, oh. "Hey, I'm kind of curious about this." <laughs> Listen, I'll be the first to admit I am one of those guys that thoroughly enjoys having a little extra attention paid to the hey. buttholes. All right, Ooh. so so if she wants to get a lick or maybe just <laughs> ring the doorbell a little bit, I'm fine with that. Never so I always make sure I'm clean down there. <laughs> All right. If you got, and I had... wish I would. Ha- I wish I had overalls because I would be squirrely Dan right now. No, nope. but exit only. I I don't know if it was the soap I was using or what, but it just made that dog go right for the old bh. Oh my and god! It was the first time I was really in a crossroads in my life, and it was: Do I steal this dog? <laughs> Do I stop it or let it go? No, no, no! Yeah, I freaked stop. the fuck out. That's why I made the roll. So... Fuck! I do- no dogs in the room. So instead of instead of saying hey, were you like hey? Hey. <laughs> yeah. He thought it was a little no, it was Asian like, man before it was like, he realized it was, it was a more dog. like God damn it, Hades! What the fuck? Or God yeah. damn it, Hades! Fuck. <laughs> oh my! Yeah. It was probably more like something like Big Gay Al would say. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ. Hey, Jesus Christ. I hate that. I'm super I hate it. No, Look no, that. stop. Oh. You're a big gay guy. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we are all big gay, Al. Yeah, especially me. I'm the smallest of the four, and I just feel like every time I'm I'm around you guys, I'm about to get fucking DP'd. Twenty percenters for life. Well, dude, I mean. <laughs> I mean, you just got added to the show next week, so that's going to be fucking something right there. You're going to oh, get... Dude, oh, shit, about the whole Gobble Goons are going to be there? And yeah, yeah the four of us and Trey and Nick Kevin. The whole lunch and, box, and, and, and EJ, yeah, baby. What are we going to yeah. do? By the way, fuck EJ. We need to talk about that off Why? Camera. Why fuck EJ? But we need to talk about that bad. Hold on, hold because on. I mean this from the bottom of, my, bottom of my nuts, which he knows it means from the bottom of my heart. You gotta yeah. I posted... This is the first time you're going to be able to see all four Gabagooligans live and in person mm-hmm. on one show. And he's like, oh, it's a lie. It's every open mic. I was like, tell Rick me what the last that. open mic you saw where me, Rick Russo, Scotty Chi, and Lunchbox over there all got to perform at the same time. Bro, I had multiple DMs today from, like, co- really good comics in the area. They're like, dude, that's a sick lineup for a fucking one. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, bro, it is. That's a sick line. Like, dude, we got to do something fucking wild. We got we to gotta figure something out. Oh, a thousand. Rick Russo percent. has to bring out Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> the naked mole rat. EJ will lose that fucking venue of his, man. No, he wouldn't. It's comedy. With, your, with your balls? Hold on. I want, to, I want to address the fact that Anthony made a big deal about this no, place we are not posting... talking about what's here <laughs> okay we can Dude, talk about i love that. your fucking pistol you posted you. that shit right <laughs> we gotta go shooting anthony hold on anytime you want i'm down I'm to serious. shoot we too film it. we gotta film it we gotta do a, sh- a shoot cast we bang, bang. all right Keep so Manny, do i know the honest guy's truth behind that why i posted Wait, that i saw you went no That's that was the, the night part. before that was for an open mic they did that Friday. Oh. What weird. pissed me off about it is I had work that Friday night. I knew I was not getting off of work. People were still tagging me in that fucking post. No shit. And instead of saying, hey, we found somebody to do it, more details to come, they were advertising their open mic in they the comments underneath as responses. To yeah, people who are commenting my that. name on it. Yeah, I was reading it. Too. And personally, I find it highly okay. unprofessional. No, I agree. To hype it up and make it seem like I'm going to be at a show, which I had no fucking prior knowledge of. Nobody said anything to me about it. Just putting it out there like, oh, yeah, you like this comic? Come to this open mic. He might be there. Like, that's what started the ICP and Eminem beef back in the 90s. <laughs> and that's a bad beef, dude, because they would have slayed together. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. honestly, they would have slayed, dude. I would have. Fuck what anyone concert. says. I would have went that concert. Got some bangers. Homies, homies, talking about the thugs of life. Anyway, peace, Eminem's mom. Hi, baby. Yeah, it's so I good. Love I love that beef. I don't know why. <laughs> because, dude, it's like, like so there. It's dude. awesome. It's one of the greatest what ifs in music history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know though, man. They went to the same so fucking high school and they knew each other. And it, mm-hmm. but they're so, but they're both so talented. Like, and in, what Insane Clown Posse has done, and Twisted, and all those fucking people that talk about death rap and like necro and shit. And then what Eminem did to basically help open the door for people to be like, oh, white people can do this. It was just like a fucking, especially the shit they'd all been through. So. I don't know, man. Which is why that, was a, that was a misunderstanding. Through, yeah, through. No. which sucks, dude. People get butthurt over too much. Like I try not no. to anymore, but that's not what happened, man. They got not a flyer. With no, with Eminem. Oh yeah, yeah. Eminem handed ICP a flyer going into St. Andrews one night to advertise a show he was doing. Uh huh. And on the flyer, it said ICP was making an appearance. Uh huh. ICP had no clue. Uh, and that's what started that whole uh, fucking beef. That's not, stupid too, though. I didn't know that. It's all stupid because you get older and a year goes by or whatever, and you're just like, you know what, man? And so many of your friends die from drinking water in Michigan. Oh, could you yeah. imagine in what Fago. those people, poor bastards? You think Mexican food will tear your asshole apart? You go drink out of that fucking hellhole. Ask yeah, Sean no Guess. Shit. He grew up in Michigan. Of course that he did. Look how so he acts much. in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece Love of you, shit. Love God you, bless Sean. you, Sean. Love you so much. We'll get, this you, we'll, 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 we'll get him on the podcast very soon. I love that dude so much. Yeah, I that love him, and then like... I hate him. Like, Why dude, do you hate him? No, no, I no. love him, but like then I hate him, but then I love him. Like That's no. just how it is. For me. He's I'm always dude. been that guy. Who drunkenly supports the shit out of you? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Every time I see him, no, I met Sean. Even at when his... he's not drunk, he is that guy. Yeah. I remember when I... Sean came to his first open mic ever. Him and I have always gotten along. Wait, great. how long has he been doing it? But he's been like, too loud sometimes. oh shit, l- l- little as over a you, year. Right? No, um, I think okay. I remember. I think he came to the Dunedin Brewery like in June of 20, May or June of 2022. So just a little over a year, uh, but he's okay. making strides. He's making fucking amazing strides. He's doing the right thing. I told this he's story. He's a lovable guy. He's oh, a yeah. lovable guy, dude. He's a oh, great absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Did I, t- did I tell you guys my Sean Gass mushroom story before? No. No, please tell. Please tell. I mean, uh, you probably have. I don't remember. So one night we were at Ordinance One and please it was. EJ's yeah. first open mic. Yeah, I remember. And um, How long Sean goes that, up on think? stage. Oh, God, probably like three <laughs> months ago. EJ's been doing it for, what, three months only? Yeah. Really? Only three months? I think. Uh, he, has a, he has a very good like confidence. Five, he has a very four, good five. confidence on stage. I'll give him that. I'm proud of him for that. That's, oh, yeah. that's so, really good. Go on. I'm sorry. We're getting ready to leave the open mic, and the last comic goes up, and it's Sean Guest. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we can't leave. Sean's my boy. I love him to death. This is going to be hilarious. Because <clears throat> I'm expecting it here, like, you know, it's an open mic. I ain't know he had new material he was working out. And he goes on stage and does this entire fucking five-minute set about him being Caitlyn Jenner running for president. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nobody in the crowd gets it. And I, it's EJ, his wife, my girl, a couple people. We were all leaving mm-hmm. to head to Kangaroo. And uh, I'm the only person dying laughing, and I turn around and look, and everybody looks so like fucking confused about what sh- what's going on stage. I, I was there. I remember. Yeah. You, you, I was I was laughing my ass off too because Sean told me he was going to do his entire bit as Caitlyn Jenner, and I'm like, that's hilarious. <laughs> so I felt bad. He was dying up there. Nobody was fucking getting it. So I turned and looked at everyone I was with, and I was like, he's on mushrooms. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it just clicked in with everybody, and they all understood what was going on. <laughs> That's so fucking phenomenal. Awesome. Dude, honestly, performing on shrooms is one of the best things that you could do. Never done it. Never you will. Shrooms is so to. fun. Dude, getting on stage and it's just like you oh, think on stage that it's on gonna... shrooms? Oh yeah. 
Listen, that sounds like a wild time. Just that listen to me, bro. Crazy. I've done it a few yeah. times, but at the improv, I slammed one night. There was like seventy-five people in there, and I went. Oh up man! As soon as I oh, stepped yeah, on stage, you just fucking took the limitless pill, bro. bro you unlocked your full potential. As soon as I stepped on stage, <laughs> it it hit me like I peaked. True All the lights. I talked about what, how it looked yeah. like Star Wars and how the Death Star was there, and there were lights flying. And I just leaned into it, and I ended up doing a set that was never written. Wow. And it was all off the cuff, just fucking bing, bing, bing. And it was just, then I did it again and ate the biggest bag of dicks you've ever seen. So comedy, <laughs> comedy, 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 baby. Shrooms for, for, for comedy, I imagine is like spinach or Popeye. Dude, for it just you, makes it you think in ways too. you wouldn't have thought of before. I don't know, but I die, dude. The laughing, Scotty. Just... Why didn't you just dye your beard white, homeboy? You are having such a struggle <laughs> over there. Because wait, 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 my beard, because wait. my beard is not as awesome as yours, Anthony. Why didn't you just not dye your beard? <laughs> what? You're better off painting yourself brown. Uh, Get it? Brown. Ooh, you're old. Now that would have been racist. Oh, it's because my it. it's because my hair is gray, Manny. Yes. Fuck yes. you. Making a gray hair joke. Nay. According to Pixar, it is. Yeah. So, what the fuck was that? Dude, they Anthony, made me look like a fat fucking idiot. You look like Grizzly. every senator in every movie ever. <laughs> yeah, you look bro. you look like about... you, you look like Al from Al's Toy Barn without the glasses. <laughs> All right, I look so. like myself with a black beard. <laughs> yeah, it's it pissed me off. And Manny, what what the hell? Manny did you looked come dead from? off. Yeah, Manny he looked like he looked like know. fucking Grizzly wanted to talk about things that scared us oh yeah yeah all right so i want to split this up into two different parts that's mm-hmm. uh, the first question we all go through and then the last second question we'll all go through it because the all second right. one i want you guys to hear the story because i've never told any of you guys a story and i feel like okay. it could be a bit mm-hmm. okay so we got soundboard now yeah <laughs> what the fuck all right yeah so just going Oh. Going in order here based off of how this is. Scotty G, tell me a time where you were freaked out by the paranormal. Okay. Um, so I don't know what I would call this one. I because I was thinking about this one because I never really had like a uh, I mean, I've like been on ghost toys and that kind of full of shit. But this one, so eleven years ago when my aunt was dying of cancer. You know, bless her. Yeah, and uh, do you say molester or bless her? Bless her, whichever you prefer, really. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ, Scotty. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's no way we can make this into a joke. And yeah, I was just, bless, I was, okay. I was like Rick just Russo, Rick Russo, the dick. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dick Russo. I said, God bless her, dude. Thank you, brother. You're I appreciate you. Doofus. So, just for clarity. So, um, yeah. Uh. It was November the 29th. It was I. Uh, it was late at night, or technically early in the morning. And my mom was, was already. My mom was. Uh, I don't remember what day it was. To be honest, with you, but uh, my mom was already over at her house with with her kids and her husband, and I knew she wasn't gonna make it the next day. So then I had a dream, and she she came to Martin the dream, the and she Jesus Christ, Rick, and uh, she came she came into my dream, and she said, "Hey, you know." I'm dead, so don't cry at my funeral, all right? I feel so much better. And then I woke up, like, at 5 in the morning, and I called my mom. My mom was still awake, and she's like, yeah, Sherry died. So I wouldn't say it was scary. No I would say it was very kind of, I mean, you know, supernatural. It was it was, it was, it was interesting right there, you know? I, I really yeah. don't know what to make of it, because I never really had, like, any kind of experience. Kind of like what you t- talked about on my old podcast, um, Anthony, where you saw that one – woman but so i we don't have to talk about that but i it, it, I had nothing like that or anything like that i never never honestly really saw like a ghost or a poltergeist that all of a sudden was actually of, off the podcast so thanks for you know pissing on my story oh was it off the podcast oh <laughs> yeah I, th- I thought it was on my podcast no that was but, afterwards but please we do gotta, talk about are you gonna talk about that yeah i'm gonna yeah, wait he was dude look Segway. at his face that's exactly what he was gonna talk about. I know he was. Red he is. I do feel bad. Dude, what a piece of shit. Dude. Look how red his cheeks are. I thought we talked about it on my old podcast. 
No, we didn't talk about it on the old podcast. Well, fuck. <laughs> All right, well, Ricky, go ahead. <laughs> All right, Richard Russo, the the Ruru, go. The third, to be exact. The Riri. Oh, I'm a little retarded. At Rick least. retard. Um, my craziest, and this is a real story. There's a close family member of mine who used to practice black magic for real. And no they shit. used to do spells in the same house as me when we were when I was a little younger. And I used to listen to Slipknot and like all that shit and skateboard and fucking live it up. Thank you, man. You look so hot when you make that face. And then uh <laughs> And then, um, so one night I was trying to sleep and I fell asleep, but then I woke up in the middle of the fucking night. I don't know the time exactly, but I smelt the sulfur shit. And then when I oh. looked over on the other side of the bed, there was a fucking goat with red eyes. That's my story. Is woke very up similar, but that. different. That's I woke up fucking crazy. That, and I was fucking shitting my pants, praying to God. Yeah, they say whenever a demon is near, it smells like shit, like eggs, sulfur, yeah, sulfur fart. Egg. Yeah, and it's I have more than one, but that was that was. The do you think? Do you think that's why volcanoes smell like sulfur because they're gateways to hell? No, potentially. <laughs> no, no, it's the combination of raw materials that are coming that's out. Right. Of it's Captain Winfrey. fucking science poo pooing <laughs> on a fucking yeah. scary Cap- theory. Captain atheist. <laughs> it's actually Oprah Winfrey's fucking. Uh, what's China. that thing that your shit goes into? In the backyard, bag. septic toilet. Tank. Yeah, a volcano is actually Oprah Winfrey's septic tank. Dirty bitch. <laughs> anyway, so no, why with that one, you whore? <laughs> no, I've heard, I've had friends talk about that too. Uh, where they've seen that, they, like kind of like almost like sleep paralysis, where they see like a figure at the end of their bed and shit. Actually, yeah, my no. actually my my best buddy's got like the worst sleep paralysis, where he sees like a fucking demon, and instead of like you know freaking out like you know or like sometimes people will kind of like they can't move when they're sleep paralysis my buddy will actually get mm-hmm. out of bed and, and attack and one time he did that he broke his fucking window uh, in his bedroom well, uh, right, he, he's almost attacked me too i remember like when i used to live with them he i would uh whoa, whoa, go, I, I, okay never mind finish your story i'm just making sure you guys weren't sharing a bed oh you're good i thought there's anything wrong with that god okay. <laughs> so what anyway, i was saying what oh yeah we're sharing a bed no i was uh Getting up to go to the bathroom, his room was right across from my room. And I remember I like made like a slight noise, and I hear him go, "Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you!" And I'm like, "Whoa, dude, shut the fuck out!" And he's like, <sighs> "And I'm like, dude, you need a fucking priest right now." And that's methamphetamines, ladies and gentlemen. No, but then I felt bad because he said, "This is why I can't, I can't get married because like he's afraid he's gonna beat the shit out of his wife while he's asleep." But I'm like, "That's a, that's good." <laughs> Maybe he's born with it. Oh, I know Maybe what excuse I'm gonna use on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey, it's a demon. Ah. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Fucking two piece in a biscuit, all because of a demon. All right, Manny, go. Man, the scariest thing that happened. I log on to Facebook and I see a man in a diaper drinking milk today. <laughs> 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 Comedy. I was terrified. <laughs> Who was it, dude? The only baby. The only baby I wish was aborted. The guy we keep talking about, and I keep showing you his picture. Oh, like that piece of said, shit! He's the reason why we are pro-choice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there, no, uh, I had to send that picture to Kelly. Speaking of septic tanks. <laughs> I sent that picture to Kelly, and she goes, what the fuck? And I said, look, if I had to look at it, so did you. Yeah, I showed Miranda, yeah. too, and Miranda was like, I, this is why I can't talk to this guy. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Dude, don't talk about black guys like that, Miranda. Mm. All right, no. Lance Box, your turn. By the way, yeah, what's the scariest no, thing no, no. other than seeing yeah. that? So, you guys know me. I'm very evidence-based. Mm-hmm. Things have to make sense for me. I don't just willy-nilly believe in paranormal. But one time when I was like 13, maybe 14, I was sleeping out on the couch in the living room, 13. And I got woken up by the smell of rotten eggs. And when I looked over into the living room, like into the dining room, rather walk coming to the living room, I saw two short little fucking gremlin looking things, just shadows, just silhouettes coming right at me. 
my heart raced. I jumped off the fucking couch, basically, and it just disappeared. All right, so I have here's never been wild. able to explain that. Here's all the really never been able We to have a lot that. of similarities, Manny, like to the point of mm-hmm. where it's scary. Yeah. That's why when so, you said that, I was like, holy fuck, that's very similar. Yeah, we have a two million. My mom. We're going to have to date. My mom has a similar story to that. Oh, yeah. And here's why. Before I tell you mine, I'm going to tell you guys something that I have never told anybody because I feel like when I talk about this, it just, you automatically get dismissed. It feels silly. Yeah. There was a portion of my family, much like in Rick's, that practiced in the black arts. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm meaning that they were in and out of prison. They were back on their child support, Section 8 housing. Uh, Nobody got it. it. Did not land. Wow. Did not land. Okay. No. Um, So one of the memories my mom has of a relative of hers was a battery died in his truck. He took it out of his truck, started speaking in tongues, did a little dance around the battery. Battery fired back up. I've always believed since that was in my family, I've always been a little bit more susceptible to paranormal shit. And, uh, what? he did a battery dance. Like, he did a fucking battery dance. dance. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And, uh, so I told you guys a story off the podcast. Happy day. Except for Rick. Of course, dude. Um, you always treat me like the fucking black sheep. Yeah, you're the redheaded stepchild. You know, you that's okay. Like the red, pu- the red pubes stepchild. I'll always be the best. No one has balls like me. No. No. Yep. See? So, the word uh, ginger must be very confusing if you're dyslexic. <laughs> I'm not dyslexic. I have Asperger's. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't touch me, please. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Unwelcome tugging. <laughs> <I feel like. laughs> Continue, Antonio. So I'm two months clean at this point. Okay. Two months? Yep. Clean of what? Opioids. Drugs. You never told me you had that problem? Mm Mm-hmm. Started when I was in high school. It was a big-ass wizard. So, yeah, this... I am so confused about what this wizard's doing right now. I think he was (laughs) making a potion. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> yeah, oh, big no. wizard. So, um, it was in August. It was yeah. middle of August, and I lived in Pennsylvania at the time. And the area Liberal. of Pennsylvania I lived in was nothing but forest. It was like two o'clock in the morning, and uh, I, since I wasn't drinking or doing any kind of drugs or anything like that. I, I couldn't sleep, so we decided we were going to go for a car ride. Just ride around the woods for a little bit. Typical redneck shit. We used to do it all the time as kids. Yeah. We're going through this straight stretch. It's like a five-mile straight stretch. There's nothing on either side of you but forest. All of a sudden, this woman in a white dress walks out in front of the car from one tree line Nuh-uh. to the other. Get out of here, dude. Get out of here, and dude. I didn't say anything. I just kept driving. No. Once once you get through the straight stretch, there's a T section, and you hang left on the T section, and there's a strip club to the right, and it was called Crossroads. I See pulled in the, the parking crossroads. lot, and I looked at my baby mama who I was with at the time, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Did you just see that shit?" And she was like, "I didn't want you to think I was crazy." I was like, so you saw the woman. She's like in the white dress. Me and her saw the exact same fucking thing. Damn. So we turned around, went back to the straight stretch where we just went through looking for this woman because this area is not exactly an area where you want to be walking around unarmed. There's coyotes, there's mountain lions, there's bears, there's rattlesnakes. Oh, my. Asians. Up truckers. Like, not a great place. (laughs) Like fucking Asians. So yeah, uh Miranda's up in North. Oh, he said bring it down the economy. <laughs> We're driving back through middle of August. It's like ninety <laughs> degrees outside. 
And when we get to the spot where we saw the woman in the white dress, our fucking windshield ice is over. No, it doesn't. Dude. Jesus Christ. I'm throw up. Unexplicably, ice is over. We had to pull off. I tried to make it through as well as I could. We got to the gas station and we had to take the windshield scraper that you lived in Pennsylvania. You keep one in your fucking glove box. I had to take it out of my glove box and we had to scrape off our windshield. There were people at the gas station asking us where the fuck we just came from for that to happen. God. Yeah, that that freaked me the fuck out. So what was the story about the woman again? Because I remember you mentioned it uh, when we talked a long time ago. Like, what she, You said she was like murdered out there or something like that by like a dude. So that was her, dude. It's not that area specifically. This is folklore that is from around the nation. I told this story to a guy who I used to bounce with. He was the cook at the bar that I bounced at. And he was really into the occult and like folklore and shit. So he knew his shit. And when I asked him about it, he said the woman in the white dress. Before I mentioned any characteristics about this woman. And he was like, yeah, it's a thing. What it is is she's a lost soul who was murdered by a hitchhiker. And what she does is, is if you pick her up, she kills you. If you don't pick you up, if you don't pick her up, she will follow you to make sure you get home. I mean, you think you know you're doing her a favor? I mean, it's just like, hey, you need to ride somewhere? Yeah, Yeah, sure. I thought you were gonna say if you pick her up, what a grateful con. Like, if you don't pick her up, she should chase you and kill you. But if you pick her up and take her somewhere, yeah, she shouldn't have to kill you. She she should give you gas money. That fucking bitch. I bet her name was Karen. She's an ungrateful cunt, and she's like literally the metaphor for every female today using their ex as an excuse for why they act the way they act. Lindsay, that's her name. It's definitely a Lindsay. Definitely exactly Lindsay. what my ex would do. You picked me up. Yeah. He killed me. I caught my life. I caught my life. I caught my life. Fucking asshole. I was put in a position where I had to kill him. He picked me up. God. All right. Well, what about uh, a. I know you, I know you, you mentioned. We'll get labeled as sexist for that. I know you mentioned uh, a non-supernatural ah. event that scared you. Uh, did you guys have some stories there? A what? I know. A I'm non-supernatural right. event. Like, like, like a, a non-supernatural time where another human fucking just scared the shit out of you. You mean like getting shot at? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, shot at. <laughs> yeah. Were you an Ebor over the weekend? <laughs> oh, I wish, dude. I would have popped one of them little lad uh, dudes. I got. I had a gun pulled on me when I was delivering pizzas a long no, time ago. I got ago. shot at because someone they were trying to shoot the guy next to me, and it was absolutely terrifying hearing the bullets hit the fucking chain link fence right next to me. Did it hit your? God did it hit the guy? Did it kill him? I can't talk about it as I'm about to die. Nah, it, was, it did. It was bad. Yeah, I've, been, yeah, I've had a gun pulled on me. When I was delivering a pizza. To shoot back. None of the fucking cases. Yeah. Are Luckily, I didn't get robbed though, which is good because the guy because the guy pulled the gun and I fucking drove uh, drove off and I don't think he had a clip on. I think he's was doing. Was he just Mexican? Um, no. Mexican. It was something. Did he something. play basketball at any point? I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he did. Really? Could he jump higher than you, perhaps? Oh, he could definitely jump higher than me. Mm. Even was even there a rumor? Safe. Is there a rumor about him having an extra bone in his foot, perhaps? <laughs> I'm sure there was. Is it true his people invented robbing? Not necessarily. <laughs> um, okay, okay. I think, I think we're getting close. Robbing. <laughs> I, think we're getting, <laughs> I think we're getting close to figuring out this game of charades. Oh, here. I've got it. Asians. You got it. That's it. Yeah, an Asian. I thought it was the Irish. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but then the normal black scared you. All right, so you guys know a little bit about my past. I'm not going to talk about it on here because statue. No, some, some. Dude, it's okay. It, I I do, and I I know it's scary, but go ahead. But uh, you know, I, I've seen people get shot in front of me. I mean, I've done fucking repos before where people have shot at me. No shit. You know, but none of that even comes close to comparison to the first halloween i didn't go trick-or-treating or help my family pass out candy or anything like that when i decided i was going to be a man and go do my own thing 
I was 17. And me and my buddy David, we call him Warbug. We were dating the Sierras. There were two girls from the school next to us in State College. The girl I was dating named Sierra, her name was with an S when he was with a C, and they were best friends. And we just happened to be dating them. So she calls us up and she's like, Hey, my mom's not home. She said, it's cool if you guys come over. I got into my Explorer, went and you know, picked up David. We hightailed it up there. We were literally doing nothing. We were sitting on the fucking couch, hanging out, not doing a goddamn thing. Then her uncle comes in. Oh, boy. Her uncle looked like Phil Samo failed Weight Watchers a few times. Oh, jeez. He's big as fuck. Yeah. Damn. If you guys like don't know who Phil Ensemble is, he's a singer for Pantera. 400, 500. Yeah. How big? At the time, three bills. I was probably like 190 at the time. Oh, mm. dude, you were hot then. Yeah, I was, I was hot shit hey. back in the day. Was? Well, he fat. still is. What are you talking about? So I had hair. Hey. It's okay. It's okay to tell him. 190 is probably better. <laughs> the funny thing is, when my mom came down to visit last, she brought this box full of shit down. And it had this big banner that was in our school of me in my football uniform and my little brother said I looked like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there and he comes in and sits down and he's clearly been drinking. He smells like the Lynchburg distillery. Oh my God. Jesus. And we're sitting there just talking and everything and he looks at me and he goes, if you touch my niece, I will fucking kill you. Mm. I was like, okay. all right, that's fucking weird. So I looked at David and I was like, we're getting the fuck up out of here. And I hugged her goodbye. And that's when he fucking lunged at me. And I fucking just kind of sidestepped him. He grabbed the hold of my shirt, but he had so much momentum going past me. They ripped my shirt off of me and went flying into this giant curio cabinet they had. No. This is the, this is the uncle. Yeah. What'd you do, dude? I was a, pussy back then i fucking ran out the door and i was looking for david to make sure he wasn't still in the house that motherfucker was ti running down the street like atl running away from big boy <laughs> atl running for big boy that's a good i was one. like, I, like that. Fuck, fuck, I was man. like i was like all right i got time to get in my vehicle because it was a 92 ford explorer it was a piece of shit and it had everything in the world wrong with it the one window wouldn't go up Back still smelled like fucking just nastiness. That's a Ford. Ford. So, but the passenger side always stayed locked. And I remember running always. And I remember running up to the driver's side door and trying to get my keys out of my fucking pocket to unlock the door. Oh boy. And I didn't do it in time. And this motherfucker came through and busted out my fucking passenger, my driver's side window that didn't roll down. Oh, jeez. I was like, fuck, okay. So fortunately, I was smart enough to take the key out of the door and run around to the other side and jump in. And I just put that shit in reverse and hauled ass off. David is at this point two blocks away. Like that motherfucker didn't stop to help me worth nothing. Jeez. I was like, all right, well, I'm sitting here shirtless. I have blood running down inside of my neck. Because his nails caught my neck when he went to go grab my oh, shirt. Dirty fucking redneck bastard, wasn't he? Yeah. So, so did he catch you, oh. like, sleeping with his niece or something? No. He so, was looking yeah, at her like he so, wanted to. Because I know you said, hey, you touch my niece, I'll kill you. So, literally, you're walking out, and then he just went to throw a punch at you guys? I hugged her. Oh, you hugged her? Oh, How geez. dare you? That's his fucking wife. No, oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's how fucked up this wife. is. I am bleeding out of my neck. I have no shirt on. We go to where her mom was working because I feel like I had to find her to tell her what was going on. Mm-hmm. Because in my head, I'm doing, I'm, I'm being Manny and I'm being logical and statistical for a second. Yeah. I'm 17, dating this girl. The chances of us making it together at high school are slim to none. I don't care about her that much. Exactly. <laughs> so we drive to the Walmart where her mom was working. This is a white trash <laughs> story. and i am in school at the time to become a junior police officer 
Mm. <laughs> the only shirt yeah, I have right. in my car. Officer Roan. The only shirt I have in my That's car is my uniform shirt from class. <laughs> so I'm going into this Walmart, neck coming out of my neck, wearing a fucking police officer uniform top and like just sagging fucking American Eagle jeans. And I go in and I like find the first person. And I was like, I need to find someone. So it's an emergency with her daughter. And she comes rushing out and I tell her the story. And she had to leave work. She ends up getting fired because she left work. Wow. Had to press charges against her uncle or against her brother. That dude went away forever because they found like a bunch of fucked up shit with him. No. And I cut off all communication with that girl for like ever. (laughs) Holy shit. Well, I'm going to bring this around full circle. And her name is Kelly. Oh my god. <laughs> I was uh really fucked up when I told you guys I used to be addicted to pills and shit. Yeah. And it was just like a late night and I got a DM and she's like, Hey, you wanna hang out? And I was like, Yeah, sure, come on over. I fucked her in the asshole and then kicked her out of my house. <laughs> I was like, That's for your uncle. Wait till my uncle hears about this. <laughs> oh, yeah, these are definitely my space days. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Dude, speaking of that, I'm sorry to say anything. But have you guys heard when I say I have a huge penis? Tip. Yeah. It's like a reverse plunger, really. Have you heard that joke? No, yeah. I haven't. No, not, okay. not from so, oh, I have from me. I don't think from you. Okay, okay, okay. Listen to this. I've been saying it for probably seven months. I stopped saying it a couple months ago, but I say it every once in a while. Another comic the other night did this shit, dude, where he goes, I have a reverse beam, and he, he sees me re- a lot. And, bro, I hate that shit when motherfuckers are doing it. Say his name. Scotty, you've talked about it a lot. I Listen, and here's the problem with me. And some of you may relate, some of you may not. That's I will hit the fuck out of somebody. <laughs> or pistol whip. So, okay, Rick is officially the fourth comic to enter this conversation that we just had today. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm. Uh, listen, if you're not fucking funny, dude, and you can't write jokes, stop. Because no one likes you anyway. But mm. I don't know what's up with people doing that shit. Say his name me. off the air. I, I, I do want to know who it was. Yeah. Group chat. You know, it's funny. It's I, funny you say it. I won't write it, but I will say it. It's funny you say this because we're in this other group chat with a bunch of comics and we were talking about this today. Bro, I'll beat the fuck out of someone. <laughs> I'm just going to say think, Oh, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're the fourth comic I know that would actually square up and punch somebody. I yeah. won't square up either, bro. I'm gooning them with four motherfuckers. I'll stomp the house on that bitch. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. There goes my ghetto side. You know, Switzerland. Because you know, I've had motherfucker to show up with a gun to an open mic. I mean, it bothers wow. the shit. I mean, whenever that happens to me, but you know, it's kind. Of, it's really funny when people do say my joke, but bomb because the delivery is fucking shit. But then I'll do the same one, and then I don't know open mic or whatever, and it kills. And I'm like, it, it's. it's it, 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 yeah, it's I me. Mean, obviously, karma. yeah, you know, the joke's there, but you know, it's really all about the delivery. That's happened to me, and I'll say his fucking name, Trey Carr. I love this guy, <laughs> but I I, I told him we love you. We love you, Trey. On. Yeah, I told a joke very, very, very early on that was stupid. Like I, I don't even tell it anymore. It's whatever happened to the gay agenda? Like it was so prevalent in the nineties and two thousands. What happened to it? Well, now it's called the transmission. <laughs> so he has a joke very similar about his gay mechanic friend who has to work on his transmission, and he's like, yeah, tell me about it. I want to know what it's all about. So I was like, oh, okay. And I just threw it out. But he's never heard me before at that point, so I was like, there's no way he actually stole it. It was just not an original thought. Yeah. For me. That that makes sense. Dude, honestly, like, I had that running mm-hmm. with, with uh, Takeout the other day. I told a joke about how I came out of my mom with my umbilical cord wrapped around my neck and how I've always been a pervert and loved asphyxiating myself when I came in the nursery <laughs> when I looked through my mom's vagina. Sorry, mom, I love you. 
Uh, she's a great Catholic woman. I'm the idiot. Uh, but like I said it, and then after takeout was like, yo, I said a very similar story that's, and it's actually real. I said, get the fuck out of here. This is real too. It happened to me. And I never heard him say it. But coincidence, coincidences do happen. Yeah. Right, but right. after the shit happened next, you know, over and over again, I think we just can't help as artists with egos, right, to fucking get a little pissed. Yeah. That happened to me at New Faces. No, it didn't. Oh, you're talking Wait, about a short tubby guy. Yeah. It happened to me at New Faces. I know it happened, still. and I didn't even know you yet. But I had seen you before somewhere and heard that joke. I think it was maybe Ordinance One when I went the first time and I went last. Yeah. And don't I say who, but say the joke. Now I love it. Well, I don't. I, I can't remember the comedian off the top of my head, but I was planning on doing the Sandusky joke. No. About. And I go up on stage, and then he starts talking about Sandusky and wanting to get molested by him, but he couldn't because he was too old. I think I know who you're talking about. Who's I know exactly who you're yeah. talking about because we and, talked about it. And I go, he comes off stage and I was like, man, that's a great joke. Where'd you come up with that at? And he goes, I grew up in Pennsylvania. I was like, wow, it's fucking wild. I grew up in Penn State and I have a very similar joke to that. <laughs> that was like, end all be all. Because if you're from up there, like you have a million jokes about it. But yeah. if you like right. or anywhere in the nation, though, you know about it. Yeah, new faces too. Yeah, someone did the um, uh, the uh, Warren Sapp, uh, but this guy did it. Warren Sapp being like yeah. Lizzo, and yeah. I'm like, Ugh. I just remember saying next to you when that happened. <laughs> yeah, I remember did I was just like, those guys bombed. They did, right? So fuck them. Mm-hmm. That's at the well, end of the day. I know they didn't get any of the first five places. Well, no, they're not. Yeah, yet. that's it's true. literally the four of us and EJ. Yeah. yeah, we had a blast, dude. That was really fun. It was Isn't a lot of fun. It was I a lot think of fun. Taurus put on a great thing, and I think what we're gonna do after we do this this thing we're doing on a Wednesday, but when we actually do a Gabagooligan show, and we can invite all of our families and like everybody we fucking know, and I'm being dead ass serious. We put it at a hundred hundred person. We're already looking at venues, so when we do it, it's gonna be fucking. And we're gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you, and you're gonna be highly disappointed when I tell you this. What? I have no family down here. That's okay. I was talking directly to Manny. He's got 150 people that he could call right now. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason he got a table of fucking new faces. <laughs> that's you know, that's I did the same thing at the improv when they uh, when we did uh, the main night there, and they let me headline it. And I was Manny, when I go fun. through my first round of Florida Man competition, if you could just bring your entire family to that, yeah, dude, do really it. Wait, mm-hmm. well, uh, mm-hmm. when you when you had done the improv, how many minutes did you do? Me? Yeah, I only did fifteen because I was oh, so really? nervous. Oh no, shit. I was so new. I w- I was no, not shit. even a year in before <laughs> this happened. So, oh, I guys. sold. I dude, I sold. I'm Damn, up tickets. Like, fuck yeah, dude. I showed people who the fuck. Nice, you know. And it was worth it, but it was also that's why I love the improv so much, bro. And, and coming up through there, and shout out to them. Like Jeff has been, hey, Jeff's cool, but he's been someone I needed more than someone I wanted. And yeah. now it's someone I want, but that motherfucker in my ear telling me, "This is where you're fucking up. This is kind of shitty. Watch out how you use this. You're not landing on something after, so it seems like you actually hate Jewish people." Like, you know, and I I look like a damn. Come on. You're like, oh, but I do though. I'm just but <laughs> shit that you need to hear as a comic, you know, because yeah. we all do raunchy material. And yes. it's like shit you need that... to hear that yeah. other people won't tell. Oh, you did so great. <laughs> that really, was it's like no motherfucker. That was Scott Bird for me. Every time, yeah, yeah I perform. Yeah. Scott was Scott like was that, always dude. like he was always my coach. He was always like, hey, you fucked up on this part. 
shorten it. Hey, try not to stutter on this part. Hey, don't don't look down at the floor so much. Hey, put fucking shoes on because back in my early, my like few first few months, I wore flip flops on stage. <laughs> and... <laughs> I still do. God damn it, Scotty. <laughs> hey man, I was trying to go for that guy. I was like, I want to be the comfortable guy, but I'm like, no, that's not how it works. I can't be Cam Patterson. No. Nah. I, Dude, I just saw a fucking shorts. video today of Cam Patterson as a fucking bathroom attendant. Uh, That's awesome. What? I fucking love that, dude. Somebody sent me a skip video of Cam Patterson as a bathroom attendant. Bro, because that's hilarious. I uh, did you? Oh, there, there. Did you, Manny Anthony? Did you guys meet him? No. Yeah, I, I met, met him once. I met him once at LOL mm-hmm. months ago. I met him way back in the beginning in Tampa. Mm-hmm. When I first started, I met him. That's also when I met a lot of really interesting people, like Buck Wild and like old school legends from Philly. Uh, yeah, I know Anthony, dude. Buck Wild, what a motherfucker! I met him like my first week doing comedy. Yeah, that's kind of weird though. Like this kind of all lends into like the shit that I asked you guys in the group chat about like fucking imposter syndrome. Yeah, what's that? I'm the worst. So, like, imposter syndrome is, like, when you feel like you don't really belong doing what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel like a fraud every minute of, yeah. Do you guys all have that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. All three of you? I do and I don't. Okay, here's what I mean by that. There's no way, dude. It's bad. It's bad. I don't feel like a comedian. I never feel that. Why not? No, let anything talk. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. No, no, no. Just a guy that says, hear this. this I'm, just a guy that's, I'm just a guy that says words. That's the, that, oh, see, that's dumb too. What the I'm, fuck's wrong with you guys? I mean, I feel like I haven't paid my dues yet, even though I've been doing this for, yes. for you know a couple of years. But I'm not like that you know. Dues. Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck I'm still. That. I mean, I'm the motherfucker that counts my months. Literally, yesterday was seven months. Who fuck fucking that, that, dude. Hey. Fuck that too. Congratulations. Yeah, I... But fuck that. You have so, something that they don't. You have to understand. My that. thing. And my I'll thing was sorry, Anthony. No, it's talk. all good, man. So my thing was that uh, I have a show coming up in December, and I'm opening for Catherine Mahoney. Yeah, she's you she's, are. she's cool as fuck. Yeah, and I was just kind of like, this is like the first comic like I've actually watched before that I'm going to be opening for. And, and it's just kind of like, yeah, I, like I see my name get put on like these bills with like all these other comics for these shows I've been doing. And I'm just kind of like, I don't deserve this. Mm-hmm. It's never like when I'm at the venue or when I'm on stage or when I go off stage, it's like not feeling like a comic's never been an issue with that. But like when I see them getting ready to do a show, I'm just like, I feel like I skipped the line so fucking hard. And don't get me wrong. I am very fortunate to be put in the positions that I've been put in. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just kind of like I see where you're coming from right there because who the fuck right. yeah, am I? yeah, because it's like 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 exactly yeah. that's the point. I, who the fuck I, am that's I? that's where I, that's where I see. Yeah, I totally see that. I right came there. in out of fucking nowhere and got first place at a competition with like 20 yeah. comics that I completely respect. Yes. Like what the fuck? Yes, you did I didn't feel something. like I, I didn't feel like I earned that. First of all, what do you mean? I didn't feel like I earned being on fucking Ryan Sickler's podcast, even though cool that was fun. And he was one of the comedians that I've been watching for years, and I'm actually like a pretty big fucking fan of him. So that was a wild moment. But the whole time I was doing the podcast, for some reason, there's that little voice in the back of your head, and it sounds like your voice, so it's very convincing, tells you you're a fraud. They know it. They see through your bullshit. They're using you for content, blah, 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 blah. My head is a fucked up place to be alone. (laughs) All right, so... We need to all eat some shrooms together and get all this. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I need to. Uh, I just I just need to get this off my chest. It is so fitting. The bulletproof Man, vest. dressed up. Something else. Well, the vest is, and it's a tag vest, not bulletproof. <laughs> There's no plate carriers in this ATF. If you're watching, I think um, I know where you're going with this. But it, it's just so fucking philosophically spot on that Manny is dressed as Silent Bob. Because I feel like every time he has inputted anything into this conversation, it's been something just so profound and earth shattering. Hmm. <laughs> and that's the only that time Silent Bob profound. ever fucking talks. <laughs> is when it's extremely profound. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's why my wife was like, you got to go to the open mic. You got to do four and a half minutes of silent comedy and then hit them with a 30 second zinger. Love it. Brilliant. I'm going to tell a dress like this tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to do it though. I don't know if I can I'm wear this. I'm going to dress like this and I'm going to do the silent bit for like 30 seconds. I don't know if That's I can fucking it. dress like this. Don't be a I have bitch. Ryan introducing me as Silent Bob also. I'm not going, I guess. You need to make it up there, man. I don't even know what you're talking about. Title brewing, man. Bring him. What about it? It's a fucking blast. It's an open mic tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Oh, it's an open mic? Mm -hmm. I'll get you on if you want to do it. Is it? Where is it? Spring Spring Hill. Hill. Because you're in Tampa, right? Yeah. You want a carpool with me? How far is it? Like 45 minutes from me. We'll talk about it after this. Yeah, man. Yeah, you let me know tomorrow morning, and I will get in touch with Ryan and get you on if you want to do it. Okay. Free Gabagool. Well, it'll God, be the, well, it'll God be the damn. first Gabagool show we're all on together. Yeah. Well, technically, New Faces was, but that was before we started Gabagool again. So we weren't right. before in the meet yet. We were just, we were just fucking four <laughs> dudes that like to masturbate. Hang on, we got to go back to something just real quick. Good. I don't understand how you three all believe that, even to a certain extent. And here's why. And just listen to what I'm going to say. Okay. In the grand scheme of existence, we are all just bags of fucking blood running around. We're all shit. We all bleed. We all have techniques. We all have faults. So at the end of the day, who the fuck is somebody who's been doing comedy for five years? Shouldn't even been doing it. And them to think just because they have time to deserve more. Yeah, that's the same shit with fucking... But if you're a truly funny person and you feel this and it's almost like a spirit comes over you when you're actually on stage and you feel it. And this Uh is why I hate people that bite writing. If you feel it, then... Dude, I don't know. I've seen guys that are only a year in the game Slam, slam in these front of two, hundreds of people. These two guys right here, man. So, listen, dude. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, so recently I've been telling a new bit. Them. They're all gay anyway. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have this, but you'll hear a bit that's so brilliant, but it's also so your style. You're like, fuck, why didn't I write this? Right? You guys ever have that I, happen? Oh, oh yeah. all, all, all the time. Like, I can truly like, say I no. Of that Brilliant never jokes that you know resonate with you as a person. You're like, fuck, I could have written this. I just didn't think about it. I've been telling this bit recently that I finally, for the first time, feel like, okay, this is a brilliant bit. Nice. And I can keep adding to it. Beautiful. You haven't heard it, Rick. It's the, the context. I'll give you context, and that's it. I won't tell you any of the bit. Dude, what if social media existed? What if social media existed during slavery? Oh my god, <laughs> it's That's phenomenal. It's good. God, I hope you talk about the whipping post. I do. <laughs> I do. Live, love, lashings. My yep. wife is fifty percent. I'm ten percent. So I can say shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we need to do an episode where we get all of our significant others on. Oh, get all us. of our wives. I would love on. that, actually. Oh. 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 Ah. Who's, who's got the biggest dick? My <laughs> wife just hit the boo button on my fucking soundboard. The boo button? Yeah. Boo. Rick, give us some uh, Give us some of the soundboard. Let's see, let's hear what you have. I only have a few things. I got this one. I love Chris Pontius. Chris Pontius. I need to get a soundboard here, actually. Hook up to my IPA. My favorite one because I'm black. <laughs> what? Laugh track? Because yeah, you're yeah, black? It makes no sense. Yeah. Have you ever watched oh. Black to come? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's JM doing a fucking joke and the joke not hitting. 
No, no, it's just him doing the joke. And right now, that's all that's on there. All right. Well, guys, yeah. what are you thinking? Yeah, you I put think a bow tie on this motherfucker. Very successful episode. I am sweating my, my wife's nuts been waiting off. for me to get out of here to eat her ass for <laughs> nice. how long now? Are you going to do it in character as Rick Sanchez? <laughs> oh, I'm pretending that she's fucking summer. You know, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 dub dub. Whoa, 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 dub dub. Hey, Anthony, take out, take out the outro. Hey, take out the outro, brother. All right, guys, this is another episode of the Gavagooligans podcast, number six for whenever Ooh. Scotty puts this together and needs to number it. Thank you. For Rick Russo, Scotty Chi, and Manny Gassett, as long as I'm not canceled for wearing a fucking MAGA hat in a podcast, <laughs> I'm Anthony Rowan. This is the Gavagooligans, and we will catch you next week. Woo! Freedom of speed.